Ahoy and welcome to War Thunder's Takushi Haiki crafting event. Takushi Haiki means special weapons in Japanese and that's exactly what this event is all about. You will have the opportunity to craft and test one of the most innovative and rare weapons developed by the Japanese during World War II. You will also have the chance to earn some exclusive vehicles either proposed or used for various weapons tests such as the Ki-48 Otsu, a Japanese light bomber armed with the Ki-148, an experimental air-to-ground missile developed in World War II. This aircraft will certainly be a special addition to your naval lineup, able to launch a powerful guided missile at surface targets from a safe distance. The LOSAT or LOSAT or Line of Sight Anti-Tank System, a US prototype weapon that uses kinetic energy penetrators to destroy armoured targets at long range. This weapon was originally designed to be mounted on a modified Humvee chassis, but in game it sits on the chassis of the CCVL. It couples long range precision firepower with impressive mobility. The IJN battlecruiser Kurama, a pre World War I ship that was derived from the Sukuba class battlecruiser. The Kurama features a powerful main battery of 12 inch guns, as well as an impressive secondary battery that includes four 8 inch guns per side. This mixed caliber armament is typical for ships of the pre-Dreadnought era. Last and certainly least is the F-100F Trainer Variant, a US designed jet fighter that was used to train pilots during the Vietnam War. This aircraft has two seats, and that's about it. It also suffers from a lack of flares and a decent missile, and so your time is probably better spent elsewhere. Unless you're looking for some diversity in your Chinese lineup. Alright, so the purpose of today's video is to try and work out how exactly this special weapons testing thingy works. So I have collected three days worth of crates. That's 90 crates all collected. And the first step is for us to start construction of our missile. So we'll start, start building all these components. It's going to take a little bit of time, so we will use some of our first place crates, which you get for becoming first on a team to speed this process up. We'll assemble a factory tool kit upgrade and that will make things much faster. It will save my time, it won't save your time so much because this is all being sped up for you. The next step is to create the next line of components. There are four lines to com complete. So once each of these is completed, we will be able to build the missile. Now I don't know exactly like, it is pretty self-explanatory. Once you do it the first time, it's like, oh yeah, well this is pretty simple. But they should have made it clear that you can't succeed on the first try. And so you're going to have to build a couple of missiles to complete this challenge. So we're almost through. We get the last row of components built up. We've got more than enough to get us through. Three days of solid play. If you'd like to see some gameplay, my last video, the Project 206, the Bloody Reaver, was how I earned all these materials and first place crates. Getting through, you'll notice that each of the components has an explanation of what the part does. And now that we've completed that, we will build the missile. Now this will take three hours, I believe, or one hour if you use the factory upgrade. So let's speed up that. Come back after a few games and, uh, while we're waiting for the missile, I've been building my next one because I'm anticipating we're going to have to do this a few times. So just keep building them and then we're going to jump into the test. We're going to test our first guided bomb slash missile thingy. I've never actually heard of this weapon before. Not that I know everything, but yeah, it was interesting to learn that the Japanese did experiment with this. All right, so we're going to jump into the test now. And it gives you some instructions, but basically we just need to guide it in using the MCLOS guidance system holding up A, S, W, and D. And that's how we steer it. Now this bomb is doesn't have much thrust. There seems to be something wrong with it. Doesn't want to keep up with us despite the fact that our aircraft is slowing down. What could the problem be? We're going to retest this just to make sure. I mean, good scientific method ensures that you run multiple tests. So let's fire it again and see if we have the same problem. It seemed to me like there was some kind of thrust issue. 
It seems to be behaving a little bit better this time. Oh, and there's the thrust. There seems to be some sputtering in the engine. So this missile is a dud. Unfortunately, and she's going... We're going to try and loft her and see if we can get her to the target anyway. But she's losing a lot of speed. The bomb is now stalling. And it's splashing into the sea. So, we have to prepare the report. And now we need to try and figure out which of the parts was broken. So it definitely was not a combat-ready missile. So we mark that as incorrect. And I believe that it was a, a propellant issue. And so we're going to say that it was the compressed air cylinder here and prepare the report. Once the uh, report is prepared, you confirm that you want to do it and they will tell you whether you're right or not. So we were correct. There was a propulsion issue and it was due to compressed air cylinders. And as a reward, we get three resource crates. Now don't worry because if you get it wrong, you'll still get one. And so we have to build another missile. Start that missile building. We'll start our third while we're waiting. And we'll start the second missile test. Let's see if we can have some success this time. So we launch off the missile. We're going to take down this paper doll. And hopefully this will be the end of this test. And we'll be able to earn our reward. Now we've, we've solved the propellant issue. Things are looking good. We're going to try and aim for the superstructure. Just below the superstructure to do the maximum damage. And we've had a hit. And yet the target is not destroyed. That's curious. Let's try again. So all the control surfaces are working fine. Propellant's working fine. It's, uh, it's receiving our signal. And so we're able to guide it towards the target. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong with the function of this weapon. And yet it did not destroy the target. And so what could the problem be? Let's see if we can replicate it. And it has not been destroyed. And so using the process of elimination from the parts here, I would surmise that it's a warhead issue and that the warhead is failing to detonate. So we mark all the others except the warhead as incorrect. It's not very good English. It's sort of like using a double negative to say yes. It's like saying no to say yes, but anyway, once we've selected the faulty part, which was the warhead, there we go. Our option was correct. And so we still need to build another missile. So I've built three missiles now, and I'm going to start my fourth. I have just enough resources to build four. I could probably build four, but I'm running short on wood. It's important to note too, that once you've built two missiles, you'll start getting the empty containers, which you can then use to trade on the market. So our third and final missile test, let's see if we can have some success. We've solved the propellant issue. We've solved, hopefully, the warhead issue. I have guidance. Everything seems to be working correctly. I have a good bead on the target and we're aiming for the superstructure. If we have solved all of the problems throughout this testing phase, we should be successful. And we've had a success, mission success, so we have achieved the task. And so now it's just a matter of compiling the report. So you get your development progress and you assemble it into a final test report. And so we have unlocked our first prize, which is if we wanted to, we could just finish the event right here. And so we've earned ourselves what we just tested, the Key 48 with the Key 148 missile, which is going to be a really great weapon. And I think that's a fantastic prize as a naval main. Like, this is great. We've got a guided weapon now that the Japanese can use. But if you want to continue on and unlock the other prizes, you're going to need to make about nine missiles, which for me is about nine days worth of grinding. That's just using basic uh, basic rudimentary estimations of the mathing. And so, yeah, decide whether that's up to you. In my general play, the battle cruise is really cool. It's probably a little bit high on the battle rating. The LOSAT is a really cool weapon, but it's got some issues with its guidance and it and it's only really going to be good on long range maps. Close range city fights, you got no hope really. It's getting them on target. And I think the F100F is really a non-starter, unless you're grinding China. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed it. Leave a like, subscribe. Until next time, Commander Tyrael out.